Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Uh, my name is Leah Haney. I am from Harrison, Maine. Uh, we call our place Maple Glen Farm. Uh, we just started raising Suffolk horses and we hatch out Cayuga ducks. I'm a little scared of chickens, to be honest, but we really wanted eggs and we have a pond, so we decided to go for ducks. Um, and we live way up in Maine and it gets really cold. Um, so the most important factor to me when I started looking was like a real cold hardy breed and the Cayuga came up repeatedly. Um, so that's, that's what we went for. Okay. And they're interesting. They lay black eggs when they start laying in the spring, which is kind of fun. Do you sell them commercially or you just use them for yourself or? We just use them for ourselves. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. And, um, and when did you start with the Suffolk? I won the first DAPNET raffle full. Oh, really? Yep, seven years ago. And that is how we got started with the suffix. Okay. Yep. All right. Do you use them at home then? Yes. Uh, she's, she's mostly a pleasure horse. She's the only one we've had. So uh, we put a little firewood. We drive her in the cart. She goes to the fair. Um, and I trail ride her. And she's a lovely, lovely little girl. So in Maine, we have the Farmer's Draft Horse Mule and Pony Club. And they have uh, Log Scoot and Twitch and... and um, and we go to our local, we do the draft horse show at our local fair show and halter, that kind of stuff. And uh, she's particularly good at the local riding club does um, trail obstacle classes. And she's so fearless that she's really good at that. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you have horse experience before you got this Suffolk? Yes, we've worked for um, Jane Gray at Trip Crest Farm in Harrison for 15 years now. Yep, Held with her six horse hitch. Well, the Suffolk is a lot different from a Percheron show horse. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. What do you like about your horse? Oh, I love that she'll go anywhere you point her. Like, really. And even as a baby, uh, she thought things through. We, you know, we, she, she, the first obstacle competition I took her to, she was just barely two. Um, and she placed very well. She just she looks at something, she thinks about it, and, and she does it as, after you ask her. Um, so... I didn't know most of these people until about 2018 um, when they hosted the first Suffolk Spectacular um, and I decided to come down. I actually even came down without my husband and I just came down and spent the whole weekend. I said, it, I always said it was the best weekend I had with a bunch of people I'd never met, you know. Everybody was friendly, everybody, you know, sat and chatted and had dinner together, talked horses and it's a, it's a very good group of people. Um, talk to me a little bit about the um, the breed itself. What what do you like about the Suffolk Punch? I like I like that they're small. I like that they're heavy. Um, as you know, the the show horses are very tall and and not quite as big and broad as work horses as they used to be, which suits for what they have to do. But like my per personally, I really like that shorter, square type body. Um, and again, I like that they'll do anything. I like to ride. My husband doesn't. So um, getting into the Suffolk, that gave us this opportunity for him to drive and work. But the same horses I can saddle and go for a trail ride, uh, which works really well for us. Okay. Yeah. And um, so you didn't bring your horse down to this event because it's too far. Yeah. Um, but who, tell, talk to me about the horses that you're using. So I have, again, I, she was the first Dapnet raffle filly. Her name is Cornish Kings Lightning. She was bred at John Hammond's place in Cornish, New Hampshire. Um, and then we, last year, we did bring her this far last year and we had her bred to Orchard Hills Red Blaze. So she um, gave us a filly in June who we call Maple Glen's Unchained Melody. Okay. All right. So now you have two horses. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And then, and whose horses are you using here this weekend? Uh, Chris and Levada Pidcock from Ohio. Uh, they're a super nice couple, and I met them at the first Spectacular. Uh, they, they really like their horses to be involved in events, but they are a little bit like they don't want to be in front of people. So um, at the first Spectacular, they were like, we have horses you can show them if you want. And so I showed them in halter for them, and, that, and the next year my husband came down and he drove them in the classes, and uh, we've been like great friends ever since then. Okay, great. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say that I didn't ask about? Um... No, I mean, if you've got any interest in, in the horse, everyone's very friendly. 
um, very accommodating. The first time I ever saw Suffolk horses, uh, I saw the ad in the Draft Horse Journal, and John Hammond was the president at that time. And again, I live in Maine, it's hard to get anywhere. He's just in New Hampshire, but he's like three and a half hours from us. And I simply called up and I said, hi, I'd like to, I'd like to see some Suffolk and, and learn about the breed. And he was like, come this weekend. Like, so if you've got any interest, do not fear to call up anybody on that list, on the ad in the Draft Horse Journal or in the Rural Heritage, they will all talk to you and they will all help you learn about the Suffolk Horse. We've been publishing the Draft Horse Wall Calendar for over 40 years. Our customers have come to expect beautiful and interesting photographs of Draft Horses printed on high quality paper, wire bound so they lay flat on the wall. Large date squares make it easy to jot down appointments or events, and every grid page includes a bonus photo. We've included photos of all the major American draft horse breeds working in the woods and farm fields, as well as performing for appreciative crowds. They cost just $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for just $32. You can get your calendar by calling 1-877-647-2452 or visiting our website at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 1-877-647-2452 or www.ruralheritage.com. Uh, my name is Murray McKnight. I'm from Port Dover, Ontario. So I came down uh, to see the Suffolk horse breed I'm very interested in, uh, in getting into the breed myself. Uh, after years of having Percheron heavy horses, uh, we're looking to, to make a switch. So our farm would be uh, what you would consider a hobby farm. Um, we're under 100 acres and uh, we work off the farm. And uh, I do enjoy using the, uh, the horses for things like raking hay and spreading manure and a and, uh, little bit of logging in the winter time. And so what you've used in the past have been what breed? Pertrin horses and uh, we currently uh, do have a team of uh, Norwegian fjord mares. And, and what do you like about the fjords? So the temperament on the fjord, uh, the ease of handling, uh, we kind of stumbled across this team um, and uh, brought them home. Uh, but have had no regrets of that. Um, my daughter is, is uh, eight years old now, and uh, the, just the temperament on those horses, she can, she can handle them as well, and, uh, and it it's puts you at ease uh, knowing that. You must have the draft year fjords. I do have the draft year fjords. Uh, they, uh, they aren't as tall as, as some of the fjords that are out there. Um, they are just uh, under 14 hands, but they are the draft year uh, Type. And they don't really know they're not as big as their Belgian brethren. No, no they don't. Uh, they, uh, they pull their weight for sure. I've, I've actually been quite impressed uh, using them. Another thing that Fjord owners, the drafty type, uh, talk about is what easy keepers they are. Oh, they're very, very easy keepers. Um, and I've talked to a few uh, of the Suffolk uh, fellows here as well, and uh, the breed seems to be, uh, have that characteristic as well. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, so talk to me about the Suffolk breed. What, what are the things that you like about, that attract you to it? So the, uh, first off, the, the draftiness of the breed um, without having the, uh, the height. Um, the, the temperament as well, and from what we've seen here this morning, um, they, they're just an all around great farm horse. Um, I also really enjoy uh, the heritage breed side of it, and uh, that's one of the key things that also drew me to the breed um, with the potential of, of carrying on bloodlines. You're glad you came to this event? Talk to me a little bit about what you've been able to do networking. So uh, I kind of started looking into these horses a couple of years ago. Um, of course, when COVID came on the scene, uh, we couldn't do any traveling, and so I, I connected with several Suffolk breeders uh, just over Facebook, and uh, it's uh, I'm meeting meeting all of them here today for the first time, uh, and it seems like we've known each other for a long time, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I definitely through Facebook, online, email, and that um, made a lot of connections that way, and it's it's great to put. Uh, 
an actual face to the name. If someone's interested, like you, in, in suffix, you would recommend them coming to the next gathering? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I The people here are great, um, and uh, you, you get to see all of the, the, the breeding uh, in person, and uh, for sure, this is the, the best way to do it, is, is hands-on. Now, this is the best foot class. Uh, I don't know if you prayed, but Mr. John Hammond and Mr. Mark DeCorn, judges for the event. By the way, we've got a card. If you haven't got your tickets on that easy card over there, they're going to raffle it off tomorrow on afternoon, evening. I don't think you have to be present to win. Everybody can use one of them cards. By golly, get your ticket off of Connie over there. She's kind of running a little information booth in the stall, so if you have something you just want to know, stop and ask Connie. And she'll get you straightened around where well, she's got us straightened around so far this morning. Be sure to see her and she'll help you out with anything you need to know. We've got food over there, hot coffee. Pretty strong, but hot coffee. Maybe we need her strong this morning. I think they're going to have breakfast available over there in just a little while as well. As I understand, about 1,500 registered in the country. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'll probably say something wrong today. But anyway, there's probably a, more than that out there. Just We're just talking about those that are red, probably out there working the farms. They're kind of made for just uh, bred for just farm work. They're the perfect size. They're not too big and not too small. Speaking with the judges, uh, one of the judges, uh, tough 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 class to judge there's no bad footed horses out there everybody looks pretty sound pretty good uh, but there had to be a winner picked and, and by golly they've gone with martha lang i don't know the name of the horse she's 16 years old uh, works regular mostly age was, uh, in, in the regular working was helping in the, in the judging of the animal uh, she feed her good but there, again there's no bad ones out there just somebody had to win and so they've chosen Martha, and we congratulate you, and thank you very much for bringing them out here, guys. Put your hands together for her. Come on now. That's right. That's right. And, uh, okay, thank you very much, and I thank the judges for their help. What do we do now, Ralph? Absolutely. They'll be right back, guys, for the teams, and the farms will be introduced, guys, and a hitch and ground-driven, so stick around. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is Fieldwork, showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. Okay, all right. Um, let's start off by telling me your name and the name of your farm. Um, I'm Andrew Knighty, and I have Blue Ridge Farmstead in Alliance, Ohio. Okay, and you raise Suffolk? Yes. Okay, and you raise them, you breed them? We do breed them. We have uh, two stallions that we use as our main working team, and then right now we have one brood mare um, that we've been breeding every year okay. since we've had her. Do you farm? Uh, we farm just a little bit, more like a homestead, I guess. Uh, so our produce garden, and um, I do hay. We make hay with some with the horses. Uh, most of my hay is far away from the farm. I at least land, so I use the tractor for that. Sure. Just for sure. time, because I still work 60 hours a week okay. off the farm. Yep, yep. Um, and so did you grow up with horses? I did not. Grew up loving horses, and my wife was the same way. Uh, we met... After college, we both worked at a dude ranch for a summer and met there. Okay. And then um, we were both able to 
get our own horses, started with riding horses, and then I was always interested in farming. Um, got a set of halflingers and fell into the, the depths of draft horse farming and with reading Rural Heritage and other magazines and all that, uh, just kept going into it. And then we decided on Suffolks because we always wanted to breed horses and uh, that just worked for us because they were a good docile temperament farm horse to begin with. So that's where we are now. Um, you guys are pretty active throughout the year in taking your horses off the farm, aren't you? Yes. Um, I love plowing with the horses and doing field work. And we own five acres and we lease some land, but I don't have enough land to be plowing with them all the time. So if we see plow day events or um, wagon trains and just stuff like that, we like to get out and, and use them. And that way you also get them out in front of the public. Yes. Yeah. And it's a perfect way to show... Uh, what kind of horses they are and how good they are. And um, just a lot of people we s come across, even draft horse people for their whole lives grew up with draft horses, never have seen Suffolks or even heard of them, some people. So what's what, what do you like about the breed? Um, I like their size. They're a little bit shorter, um, so they're easy to harness. They're easy to, to get on because we ride ours as well. Um, they're easy to work around and then just their temperament uh, they don't get worked up easily uh, they're nice calm collected uh, I work two stallions together all the time and I think that shows their temperament more than anything um, you can work them around mares work with other horses work with our kids are three and four years old so they're riding the horses they're riding the stallions they're working with us and uh, the horses just do great with all of it and when you talk about a horse being calm, it would be a mistake to, to talk about them like as if they were being sleepy. They're Correct. Not sleepy. Correct. Um, mine walk calm and collected, um, but they, if you ask them to, they will go a little bit faster. Um, but they are just, they don't get, stuff will scare them for sure. And they'll, they'll dart off, especially in the early training stages. And each individual is a little bit different. Um, but overall, for the breed, I think you just see the head, the mindset there that they want to please you and they want to just learn new things and are maybe a little less scared or they get scared once and then they figure it out. Right. Um, yeah, and then I think they, that's exactly right. I think that's the best way to put it. They, they're alert, um, but they're, 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 not, they're not panicked every time by the same thing. Yes. They realize it's not a monster eventually. And I had, our first team was halflingers, which I loved, and I still love the halflinger breed. Um, but they would, even just harnessing them up, I would notice, they would just get themselves in a little bit of a frenzy and they'd build up a sweat and they would end up be dripping in sweat, even when it was cooler out. Yeah, right. And like last weekend, I plowed with the three of my horses for hours and hours and hours, and there was just a little bit of sweat underneath their pads. Like, they still sweat, especially in the summertime, raking hay or something, they'll still get sweaty, but they don't work themselves up into that frenzy. At least all the ones that I've worked and owned, um, there might be some individuals that are a little bit different, but uh, that's my, been my, my experience with them.
John Hughes, I believe. Team coming in right now. North Lend Sheep Dairy. Reaper Donald Donald Mary on the left. Four Boy Farms on the right. Red Oak is the name of that horse. Look real good coming through there on that first roll. Get them turned around here, come back through. Can't get a cone, can't go out of bounds, as you know. Stop the log, tail of the log, the other end. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.